evening and welcome to this year's first ECU TV news broadcast. I'm Rachel Kelleher and tonight we'll be taking a look at the top news stories that have taken place across both the Glasnevin and St. Pat's campuses over the last week. Our first story this evening looks at the ongoing construction of the new Student Union Centre, which is due to be completed in February 2018. Michelle Martin reports. Construction of DCU's new student centre is officially underway following the first demolition of a wall last week. The new building is set to be worth 14 million and Student Union President Dylan Kehoe ensures that it'll all be worth the wait. In February 2018, DCU will have the most modern and, and, and the best student centre in the country. The look and feel of, of the building, uh, we just got images which will be released quite soon um, and I'll be sending around to the student body where we got kind of images of what it will look like and it will be phenomenal. The new building will have an entrepreneurship and innovation suite as well as a student leadership and life skills centre. It will also feature a new radio station for DCUFM as part of an arts and culture hub. In the meantime, businesses have relocated while construction takes place and a marquee has been put up for student union and society events. Both businesses and the SU are coping, but how is it affecting the students of DCU? Oh, it's grand, sure. Yeah. It's good to see like new facilities being built on the campus. Uh, it's a bit of a nuisance at times, but it's not, it's not too bad. It doesn't get in the way that much. It's really annoying when you're driving in and you have to wait at the traffic lights and builders and just everything's different and I don't really like it. I think it's good because you see improvements in the campus, but it's also there is kind of obstructions in the way and you have to go around them. So that's about it. But I think it is good. I'm Michelle Martin for DCU TV News. Dublin Bus have introduced a series of new bus routes serving DCU in order to aid students commuting from Baldoyle, Port Marnock and Dunboyne. DCU TV News reporter Emily Crowley spoke to Sustainability Officer Samantha Fahey regarding the new routes. Dublin Bus recently announced three new bus routes to DCU. Already serving the college are the 104 from Clontarf and the 44 from Dundrum. As of Monday the 17th of October, DCU will be served by the 31D from Baldoyle, the 42D from Port Marnock and the 70D from Dunboyne. Okay, so earlier on in January 2016, we did a survey of um, all of the campuses, so all staff and all students, and we had 2,500 respondents, and from the respondents, we've calculated that about 5,000 cars a day turned up to park on the 1,800 car parking spaces that we have across all of our campuses. So 5,000 into 1,800 doesn't go, and so it was one of the major reasons why we started looking at alternatives for how people get to DCU. It's also one of the major reasons why students choose to go to a specific university, the connectivity to the university so it was really important to start working on how we increase the number of buses that actually come to the university. DCU students have been having mixed reviews about the new bus routes so far. I think it's like a great instruction for like all the college students because living in a rural area like I really understand what it's like like to not be able to get a bus regularly like you'd spend maybe three hours waiting on a bus to come out of time it's absolutely like ridiculous like I even had to get a car because our bus routes were so like staggered and um, I think it'd be great for students that be able to commute from further areas so maybe more people will come to CCU which would be like good for campus. And stuff. I'm really happy because I have to travel from Baldoyle so commuting for me I have to get like a train and then a bus or two buses so if I'm in for nine I have to leave like my house at like 10 past seven so it's a pain. So the new bus that's coming in uh, is the 31D, I think, for me, from Baldoyle. So I can get the bus. It's only one every morning, though, so that's also a bit of a pain. But at least it's one direct route, so, and it's quarter to eight, so I get in on time. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm really happy, and I can actually get to college easier, so I'm approving. Uh, there's one from Lucan, which is where I live, obviously, and uh, it's one of the private bus companies, so it's like 37, 38 euro a week, as opposed to 20 euro a week with Dublin bus. So I can either spend an hour, like an hour coming into college and to get in two buses or I can get like a 20 minute bus but it's twice the price so that's the dilemma I face. So if it was a Dublin bus it would be perfect but it's not. So uh, I haven't used it yet. But I know people from Lucan who do use it and I think they find it real handy because it's just a lot quicker but uh, I haven't done it yet. As well as these new Dublin bus routes, JJ Kavanagh coaches have organised bus routes from Scaries and Newbridge. Bus Aaron have organised new bus routes from Trim and Navin while Matthews coaches are still operating from Dundalk to DCU. For more information you can look at DCU's public transport website. This is Emily Crowley for DCU TV News. The German themed festival Oktoberfest came to DCU for the first time this year where students all over campus turned up to take part in the festivities. Events coordinator Patter Gill spoke to our reporter Amy Lawler and said how he was pleased with the overall success of the event. 
DCU's Student Union held its first Oktoberfest last week, hosting German-themed events in both the Nuba and Marquis over the course of three days. Events coordinator Patter Gill is pleased with the overall success of the event. Generally, as a trend over the years, events that take place over more than one night haven't been very successful, so this is probably one of the most successful of that nature event. You know. We sold out Tuesday and nearly sold out Wednesday. Monday was relatively quiet, but we knew it would be. But uh, at the end of the day, it's not about money for ticket sales or anything like that, it's about student engagement. So we still wanted to put on the third night on the Monday for people that wanted to go. And, um, but we knew it would be relatively quiet, so we're expecting that. Highlights included a traditional German brass band, drag queens, Devine Divine and Dolly Grip, and Shite Night, appropriately renamed Scheiser Night. Tickets dropped from five to two euro on the final night of the festival. However, this is pre-planned by the SU in order to boost morale and keep the incentive going. We talked to DC students to find out if they went and what they thought of it. Yeah, it was good. The Monday night, I didn't go to Tuesday, I went to Monday night. Um, there wasn't that big of a crowd. I would have expect, I, I hoped for a lot more of a crowd. But then like the band kind of just let everyone go and even though there was a small crowd, we kind of made it our own and we had a bit of crack. Well, I was there last night and it was actually great. Um, went out with a few buddies of mine and we sort of chilled in the marquee where there was a lovely brass band playing. It was just, it was mad dancing to that sort of music. It's a bit different to the modern stuff. So it was pretty fantastic. None of my friends went and I just didn't really have much of an interest going and I didn't think, like I didn't hear too much about it. The drag queens were a bit weird, but it was funny. Like it was something I'd never seen in DC before, so. I'm Amy Lawler for DCU TV News. The Snow Sports Society were forced to hold their annual balloon drop in the marquee this year due to the current construction taking place in the hub. This event gives one lucky member a chance to win a golden pass to this year's annual ski trip. However, the event, which was a huge success last year, got off to somewhat of a false start. Paul Dwyer reports. <laughs> A large crowd of students gathered outside the marquee for DCU's Snow Sports annual ball drop. What happens at this event is that a container of colourful balls are hung from the roof and then released. The balls have numbers written on them which correspond with prizes, the main one being a golden pass to Snow Sports ski trip to Andorra. The event, which was a huge success, was held in the hub last year. However, Due to reconstruction, the society had to move its main event to the marquee. As the countdown begun, the students crowded eagerly beneath the container. However, there was somewhat of a false start. Five, four, three, two, one! Eventually, after a number of attempts, the balls were in full flow. As the winners took to the stage to collect their prizes, a number of the strong students turned violent towards committee members and each other. This is Paul Dwyer, DCU TV News. <laughs> Great point. Budget 2017 was released last week, highlighting a promising increase in funding to third level education. We sent reporter Lee Ashton out to see what DCU students had to say about the new amendments. The Minister for Education, Richard Bruton, has said third level education is set to receive its first significant increase in funding after almost a decade of cuts in the 2017 budget. He has said an additional 36 million will be allocated in 2017 and a further 17 million the following year. We asked students where they would like to see the money best spent. I don't know, I suppose like 36 million between all our universities, I don't know if that's enough. I know all the Irish universities have fallen in the rankings. like. Uh, and they have done kind of slid, slid down over the last few years, so I don't know if that will be enough to, to keep us afloat. But um, yeah, I, I just like to probably go into, I'm from a science background myself, so I like to go and kind of research and that kind of area. It could probably, I mean, in, being in Dublin anyway, I know as a student, accommodation's a big issue. Accommodation needs to be sorted because other, because people are like, are being abused by landlords and stuff like that. Uh, I think mental health services as well need to be improved because just for some people who are suffering there's just nothing there for them. Another area they felt personally affected by was the incoming sugar tax as well as the 50 cent increase in cigarette packets. And we're hoping that like, by raising the price continuously that eventually that will encourage my ma and everyone else to stop. Because it's got to the point where we're all trying, they've tried all the quick stuff 
but hopefully if it gets too expensive they won't be able to keep it up and that'll make a difference. Well I spoke to my family will be involved in uh, convenience stores and that sort of end. So the sugar tax is going to have an effect on us in a roundabout way. I don't agree with it. I think that the sugar tax is not going to solve the problem. I think the problem is a, a lifestyle problem. It's about education of um, you know, how to train properly, how to, how to eat healthy. I don't think putting the tax on it is going to make a blind bit of difference. Liam Ashton, DCU TV News. DCU and Actus travelled to Toronto, Canada last month to compete against 35 other national champions in an Actus World Cup. Reporter Andrew Byrne spoke to Chair Jack Kane and other members of Anactus to see how they got on. A relatively new but successful society, DCU's Anactus travelled to Toronto last month to compete in the Anactus World Cup. I sat down with the society's chair, Jack Kane, and other members of the society to figure out what Anactus is all about. Anactus is an NGO, it's in 36 countries around the world, and basically we're students and we dedicate our free time to help marginalised groups of society basically through social entrepreneurship. Well, Enactus run um, all over Ireland, all over the world, and in each university um, there's Enactus groups. And basically, once we all work throughout the year, at the end of the year, there's a big national competition. And each college goes and represents their, um, their team, and then there is an ultimate winner, and DC won this year. And that's what gave us the opportunity to go to Toronto for the World Cup. Our team presented really well, and. Um, it was a tough, tough competition because the, the standard is so high in all the other countries, but uh, Team Ireland were great. Yeah. Yeah, well, we have four projects at the minute and we decided to choose two of them. We only get 17 minutes to present, so we picked two. One is Head Start that we've had now for four years. That is weekly dance, drama, music and art classes for people with intellectual disabilities and is powered by volunteers. And we still run it every Tuesday here in the Glass 11 campus in Henry Grattan. We just go down for two hours and dance and do outplays and stuff and we have loads of fun. The other one was a brand new project from last year, it was called Prison Break, where we took a rehabilitated ex-prisoner and we set up for him to run fitness classes for students out in, in the park. And um, that was just a way to help him reintegrate into society with so many prisoners just end up falling back into the trap and go back into prison. Former prisoner Kieran spoke about how Anactus helped him. So, it meant that I was able to have extra, extra few quid for bus fares, um, maybe to go to see my kids, which was great, you know. Um, could I only get um, job seekers allowance on the door? I've never felt judged coming here. I've never felt judged at DCU College, and um, that's a big hurdle to get over. Um, it's, uh, it gives you a lot of confidence then, you don't feel that, and you can be your natural self. The, the real thing we notice about Natus is that relatively it's really new in Ireland. This is only the sixth year it's been here. I just in comparison, this is like the 21st year it's been in places like Kazakhstan. So we find that like, the competition is really intense between the Irish institutions and then when we go to World Cup, like we're the best in Ireland, but some of these projects the other countries have have been going longer than Natus has even been going in the country. So the next stage really for Ireland is to be able to put projects in place that can run over five, six years and through multiple teams so that when they get brought to World Cup they can make a bit more of an impact with the, with the big hitters. Hopefully Enactus can advance even further next year. This is Andrew Byrne for DCU TV News. And finally, our last story of the night focuses on a more serious matter. With over 16% of all Irish students saying they have had an unwanted sexual experience whilst in college, universities across Ireland have introduced sexual consent workshops to increase awareness. Kira Moran reports. 16% of students have had an unwanted sexual experience while in college in Ireland. A survey conducted by the Union of Students in Ireland has found a high case of sexual assault among third level students across the country. Of those surveyed, only 3% had reported the assault to the Gardaí. We spoke to a college student who told us about her experience of being sexually assaulted. It was just one night when we were with all our friends, everyone was drinking, I was so just drunk that I couldn't, I didn't know what was going on or what was happening around me. And one of the guys was like, come on, I'll take care of you. I was oblivious to what was actually going on. And he started kissing me and touching me and and I didn't, don't even remember this, but until the next day, 
when I was texting my friends, apparently we had sex. My friends, when I talked to them and told them how I felt and how I felt like I was actually raped, they laughed. With students transitioning into college social life, many have various ideas of what sexual consent is. I think sexual consent is knowing throughout your whole encounter that the person is happy with what's going on and that they're okay with everything that you're doing together. It's just mutual agreement between two people, something that you feel in this day and age you really wouldn't have to think twice about. You feel like it's kind of hard to explain, like yeah. put it into words what it is, but you just know, you know, if somebody wants yeah. to go ahead and do something yeah, with you, definitely. they'll make that obvious. And if they don't, like you'll know too, yeah. you know? Um, consent is not feeling pressured to do something that you don't want to do and also knowing that you... <laughs> I don't know. A sexual consent means both parties understanding each other's intentions uh, and both people obviously giving each other permission and having a swell time while doing so. In order to increase this awareness, some third level institutions have introduced sexual consent workshops to campus, including Dublin City University. Over the next eight weeks, DCU will be running these classes which focus on empowering students and making them aware of what sexual consent is. The classes will also teach students how to recognise sexual assault and how to deal with it. There are hopes that these classes will be turned into an academic module similar to those in campuses across the UK and the US. The model is called the Intervention Initiative which was uh, devised by the University of West England. We have about 32 people attending now. Um, they have to attend every workshop in order to complete the program. The university is where it's been implemented um, as, a, as a compulsory uh, part of attending university. Um, reported cases of sexual assaults actually decreased longitudinally by 44%. With high numbers of students of the college age group reporting to sexual assault treatment units across Ireland, the importance of sexual consent workshops is highlighted. A lot of our attendance is here in the Rotunda and in most sexual assault treatment units. Um, the highest age group is 18 to 25 year age group, which is college people. I think that raising awareness and discussion around consent is hugely important for people. Kira Morin, DCU TV News. DCU TV News recognises the seriousness of the issues discussed in the previous video and would like to encourage anyone affected by these issues to contact the numbers provided. Now let's take a look at some of our sports news. Over to you, Paul. Thanks, Rachel. The mock All-Ireland between Dublin and Mayo took place on St. Pat's campus two weeks ago. Both teams were clinical in their finishing, but in the end, the Dubs were crowned mock All-Ireland final winners. Liam Ashton reports. An indication of what's to come. This week, Dublin played Mayo in a mock All-Ireland final on St. Pat's campus. The teams were made up of a mixture of students across all campuses and a combination of rules of both the ladies and men's football games. Academic Affairs Officer and Referee James Donoghue explained the idea behind the match. Like, we felt like the, the thing that we wanted to really push was that we can have a vibrant campus on each of the campuses and it's student-led. Um, so myself and Manus and Dylan kind of sat down and we talked about what we could do and we felt like handing out free stuff is just basic but we felt we'd do something that's really student-led and all our final weekend obviously we saw an opportunity because mass numbers from Mayo and Dublin in the college and it's it's went really well we're really happy with it and we're going to do a bit of a daytime music and stuff in Queens because we think the daytime stuff is good uh, for commuters and stuff like that so really happy with it. After considerable half-time lead for Mayo the Dublin students fought hard back to win the match with the aid of a Mayo own goal. Both captains said a few words after the match but it was the Dublin team who were smiling bringing home the coveted Ham Maguire Cup. Actually, you know, it's, uh, it, was, uh, it was a tough one to be honest. We knew we were going to get a good game from Mayo. Like, they were going to be hard hitting, they were going to be moving the ball fast. So we knew what to expect going in. But uh, yeah, sure, the game, we started off fairly poorly, I have to say. It was a slow start, Mayo got on top early. But uh, now, like, we picked it up then in the second half, and the goals really made a change to the whole thing. So, no, it was a good game. Maybe we had a great game, and sure, we're just relieved to have the right side of the results. Um, yeah, it went very good. Um, I mean, the curse had followed us the whole way here to St. Patrick's campus. We scored an own goal. Um, but look, that won't get us down. Um, Mayo are magic, Mayo madness, and Mayo are back. Come on, Mayo! This is Liam Ashton for DCU TV. In hurling, DCU had a comprehensive victory over St. Pat's College last Thursday in St. Clair's. St. Pat's were hindered by a number of injuries sustained during the match, which allowed DCU to win comfortably in the end. William Dunn reports. 
DCU have put back-to-back -back victories together in the Senior Hurling League following comprehensive victory over neighbour St. Pat's. Owen Conroy pounced on a mistake to score the game's opening goal before scores from AJ Murphy and Liam Fahey put DCU further ahead. St. Pat's were still within a chance at half-time, but they were relying too heavily on their place balls. St. Pat's lack of creativity from play will begin to cost them dearly as DCU upped the intensity. DCU began to assert their dominance in the game with a St. Pat's puck out being a recurring scene throughout the second half. St. Pat's battled on, but DCU's class shone through. Goals from Joe O'Connor, Jason Byrne and Owen Conroy added to DCU's impressive scoreline. DCU finished with a flourish to leave the final score at DCU 4-19, St. Pat's 11 points. DCU's next outing is against UCD on October 26th, where they hope to replicate their winning start. William Dunn, DCU TV News, Glasnevin. That's all your sport, back to studio. Thanks Paul, that's all for this week. Tune in again to our week 8 broadcast for more campus updates. That's it from me, I'm Rachel Callagher with DCU TV News.